Morning fellow zombies, it's 5.09 in the morning West Coast time for Friday the 26th of April 2024. We were at John C. Roseman in California who's barely alive and barely awake this morning. Anyway. Interesting news happening on the front lines, isn't it? It's not just a Trump crap going on that he's going through another day of testimony with one of his so-called friends. And then the Supreme Court yesterday heard the arguments of why Trump should have absolute immunity and every other future president should have absolute immunity. Every time I keep hearing about a defense attorney making his plea, it's like fingernails on a blackboard. I just couldn't stand this guy's voice for the life of me. And he would come out the word salads and he would just rattle things up real damn fast, drive the nine panel crazy. But if that wasn't bad enough, shout out to artist in recovery, Mr. Dill. No, I didn't notice anything about any blotches on your face regarding any uh, shaving. But you did mention it in the comments, so I'm mentioning of that. I'm worse. I need a haircut and a shave. I haven't had one since COVID. At least a haircut anyway. Your TikTok is going to be in serious political hot water. China don't want to get it released. The company Bike Dance that owns this thing. Well, apparently they said they had no uh, apparent rhyme or reason to get rid of it. And the Chinese government says they'll fight the United States in court regarding it. Congress and Biden have already signed off on this one. They don't want any Chinese influence on it. It's the Chinese government. I have to make that clarification. Chinese government influence over it. Because there are certain algorithms out there that by dances uses that uh, entice TikTok users to look at this and check out that. And the, fear, the, the fears and probably the logic in this one is China may use those kind of algorithms to entice people to follow along what China wants people to follow. And they're willing to fight it out in the United States court system keeping their algorithms and not allow bike dance to sell TikTok to anybody. Especially if it's going to be U.S. They're going to fight it out in court. I think it's got about a year. Year's life on that, on that uh, law there that uh, they're giving a year for the company to do what it's got to do to sell it off to a U.S. investor. Because they're trying to protect United States citizens from any foreign influences. I said before in one of my other videos is we already got the Middle East doing that crap to us right now as it is. Shifting to the West Coast, UCLA became a uh, the camping ground. A uh, campground. The students at UCLA threatened to stay at the campus for a long period of time if, uh, before they get their way. They didn't want to have nothing to do they don't want to have the UC system have nothing to do with the, I call it the Middle East War. That's what I call it. I call it the Middle East War, and that's what they're going to be doing it as. They're going to be camping out on a college campus for a long period of time. In a way, they're going to be forcing UCLA to do stuff that USC 
had already done. UCLA has already got a small campus, but they also get support from LA Sheriff and LA okay. in uh, LAPD. I don't think the protesters understand. I mean, they they're doing what they they feel is necessary to get our attention. Well, they got our attention, all right. But the campus on USC was a little bit more quieter, and more peaceful than you than UCLA because. As some of the local press had been telling us and showing us and demonstrating, including the KTLA, we got issues, boys and girls, concerning about the students who are clashing with each other. They got arguments, loud arguments with each other regarding the situation, but that's about it. Swinging a watch, I think I got ring about. Pushing, shoving. to get 
to their commencements due to heightened security measures. Henry. Okay. You heard about that one. That's from KTLA, Los Angeles. I gotta put that on my notes regarding the situation. There had been remarks from congressional, I'll say from the Republican side or the Trumplican side anyway, who threatened, I'll say that again, threatened, threatening students one way or another concerning about what, they, what their opinions are and how shameful they should be or well, how they're acting and reacting. I mean, John, Speaker Johnson was being very much of a, an idiot. Several of them from the Trumplican party followed him to show solidarity what was going on. A couple of days ago, he went out of Colum uh, Columbus University, one of the campuses, and got booed by the students. That's why he got pissed off at and he said what he said. He's got him on record. Johnson wanted President Biden to send in the National Guard. Biden said no. You call the state you, you call the governor on that one. The governor is not going to do this. The governor is going to say no. Political grandstanding, that's what they wanted to do, is to show themselves do, doing political grandstanding about threatening the students. If they don't behave, they're going to get the National Guard on their ass. I doubt he actually cared what was going on. He just wanted to get his moments of fame. Something away from the Trump crap going on, but he's showing that the theoretical GOP doesn't care about the students' rights or freedom of speech or anything. Nope. Not a damn thing. Nothing. Don't care. They want to massacre a situation like Kent State back in the 60s. We had the Vietnam War being protested back then. We had one particular college campus back in Ohio. Kent State University. Apparently, the governor had called out the National Guard and, arm, and had them armed. The students were unarmed. They were protesting the Vietnam War. They were being, according to other people, unpatriotic. Unpatriotic. So is this what the students are doing? Being unpatriotic? Not showing their complete support to the United States that they have to have the National Guard threaten them because some politicians who want to make their bones are doing this because they want to show that they're tough. Who's got the worst political viewpoint right now anyway? Biden's got his hands tied up with real world implications what's going on right now and he's got to deal with, with these lunatic Congress people who want bloodshed? Well, they'll deny it, but if they made, they made the remarks on it on a campus. At least Speaker Johnson did. But he had people support, uh, supporting him on this one. It's insane. So, I got the tune of <coughs> Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young going in my head. <clears throat> they were singing about this. Little side note. Late 80s, early 90s, there was... Uh, 
time when I was working in retail hell. And I was working as a uh, receptionist, answering the phone calls, batching messages, quick star check here and there. I was working for Circuit City at the time. And there was an anniversary coming up on Kent State. I think it was the 30th anniversary. Somebody had made <coughs> a compilation of music from Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young and maybe another artist or two, but also they put in the words of what happened. <coughs> I believe they got their ass sued on this one. Recording disappeared, but it was still heard on the anniversary on their station. I heard it. I listened. And it was haunting. There was families of the Kent State Massacre that sued on this one. They didn't like what was happening. Listening to that music, I didn't get it back then. I didn't. I didn't want to listen. To it. I, I actually I listened to it because I liked the music on it, but I never heard the recordings of what happened when this one governor had the state troopers and national guard warning the students that if they didn't leave. They were going to get shot. And the music from Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young was talking about this. The music's still out there on, online. But listening to that conversation, if the students were going to be approaching the soldiers and putting flowers in their guns. They were going to get shot. And they were shot. And it was running around and there was chaos happening. If I'm not mistaken, American Graffiti 1, or was that Graffiti 2? I think Graffiti 2 was showing this um, indirectly. Was doing a drama... Uh, <clears throat> uh, trying to throw it as uh, part comedy, part drama on this one. They weren't showing the actual video clips, but they were showing a college campus going through that and how these students growing up, the young people, were protesting. It's one of the harder movies I was trying to watch anyway. I didn't have the context back then. My brother liked watching it once in a great while, but after that, we just didn't even bother to watching it. I had an all-star cast in a thing. I think it was number two. I think it was number two on that one for American Graffiti. Actually, it was called More American Graffiti. Steven Spielberg's uh, comedy. It wasn't a George Lucas. It was a Steven Spielberg back in, I think, back in the seventies on that one. I remember Cindy Williams and Ron Howard in it. Two major stars I remembered. Everybody else kept I kept messing up on the names. But listening to that now, applying that towards what's happening with the Middle East situation, I don't know how to define it. I don't know how to label it. Do I call it the Israeli situation, conflict, battle, war, genocide? How do you define this? 
I need to find human suffering right now on both sides of the of whatever it is happening. And you got the world reacting on this one. You got dozens of countries are making demands on Israel and, and Hamas to knock the shit off, including Hamas to release the, the, the captives. If there's been a long-term plan of Hamas, they, they screwed this one. They screwed up this one real bad. There had been reports that there was, and, and I'm trying to check it online because I don't know if it's legitimate or not, that Hezbollah had launched rockets into Israel because of this shit. I still can't find it. I still can't find that news article. One second, I'm going to put you on pause real fast while I research. Okay, so I did a um, Google search on this one. <coughs> Sorry. About three days, three or four days ago that this happened. They're just now posting it online as live. Give me a break. But because we had this Trump crap going on, that's what was taking more and more of the uh, headlines. AFP had posted this on Tuesday. Lebanon says Bilal launched dozens of rockets at Israel after civilian deaths. It was reporting that they launched dozens of rockets at northern Israel in response to the killing of two civilians in a strike blamed on Israel in Lebanon south. The Iran-backed Hezbollah group in Israel have exchanged regular fire in the south of Lebanon since October. Hezbollah fires fired dozens of Kadusha rockets at northern Israel as part of the response to the Israel, Israeli enemies' attacks on civilian homes, specifically the horrific massacre of ha in Hanan and the killing and injuring of civilians, the group said in a statement. I'm reading this off of the, off the news blurb on this one. And they get any descriptions of how many pe of people that died in the in the rocket attacks. <laughs> but something like this would have caught my attention. And I didn't see it, I didn't hear about it until I'm checking a few things out on, on YouTube. And I say, the live report. Live report, okay, let me see. And then I didn't see it. I see other things, live reports. I'm like, you assholes, this is fake news. So yeah, it made me hesitant about checking this thing out. I didn't even see it on the local stuff. They would have been t they would have been posting on this one and they didn't. So it just kind of rattled my cage a bit. Something of this nature would have been catching my attention on this one. But it didn't. All because we had to focus on Trump and his and his belly aching. But no. We got the students past couple of days taking our attention away as well. And none of them mentioned anything about it. None of them mentioned about Hezbollah launching attacks in Israel and Israel. No, they're doing tit for tat on this one. Tit for tat. We sound like it's just nothing like tit for tat. Oh, well, it's just a tit for tat thing. <laughs> no. Tit, with tat, tit for tat with rockets. And how many people can we injure at the same time on both sides? That's why I'm calling it a Middle East conflict at this point. <clears throat> Basically, you got Ground Zero, which is Israel. You got Hamas doing this stuff. And, and the leaders who weren't even in there, just the foot soldiers. The leaders were already outside the country. Israel wanted to find out where the leaders was, either negotiate with with words or negotiate with rockets. Preferably with rockets. They're still pissed off about the situation. I wouldn't blame them. So right now, they're being pressed upon, Israel and Hamas, to knock this shit out. When you have... 18 countries demanding the release of the hostages from God, uh, from uh, 
from Hamas. You also have to get Israel's government involved in a situation to tell them to knock off their firing. I mean, yeah, you, you did your job. You, you raised the whole damn place down to, to the ground. You just practically did genocide. You got other countries, including the United States, students protesting like crazy. In the colleges, they encourage students to be liberal-minded, open-minded, and not to mention uh, confrontational in a way. Debates are having one, th one thing, but when you've got debates like this going against each other, Went for the, the pushing and shoving on this one. I know that Hamas kidnapped a, vi a wide range of people, nationalities and of different ages, and it hurts like hell to see this thing. It does. Been going on since what, October, November? They started this crap. They really wanted to protest. Why didn't they protest? They didn't. They just allowed extremism to go crazy. And now we got this situation happening. And it's continuing. Israel said it would, they'd like to release people if Hamas were to release their people. Have a six week ceasefire. A truce. Will it work? I don't know. Does Netanyahu still want more bloodshed? He's still trying to hold on to this conflict like crazy so he can keep his job. He wants to protect Israel, but I think he's more protecting his own ass than anything else for that matter. Meanwhile, we got students protesting their own uh, school systems and trying to force the peace. Said before in UCLA, they want to do a long-term camping, but the administration out there hadn't said if how long they're going to be able to tolerate this. Just how much are they going to tolerate it? USC didn't, because the security concerns that they that they announced they're not going to tolerate it. They weren't going to tolerate a valedictorian talking about the conflict in her own personal opinion about it and they sh they didn't want her to inflame anything in everybody so what she do <sighs> they silenced her and anybody else is going to be talking about it UCLA would rather have her discussions on the thing if they had a live open debate about the situation that's one thing but if the students are going to be clashing with each other, it's only a matter of time before they get a response team going in there. And I'm afraid the LAPD and the Sheriff's Department are going to be going in there. They're going to be helping out the campus police on that one. USC has already locked down people who are coming into the campus. If they're not a student, you're not welcome. If you're not the press doing a job on it, you're not welcome. They'll be doing the same thing with UCLA pretty shortly, my guess. And they would have to. They would have to do this. Other than that, Secretary of State Blinken's over in China right now talking with Xi Jinping about what's going on these days. Somewhere in there they're probably talking about uh, the TikTok situation. I had been warned a long while ago they had con they had congressional meetings over this thing. And they were talking about this one. They were They were telling the the people who owned it, representatives of ByteDance, 
that either they divested or they were going to pass a bill to force them to divest. And the federal government would shut them down. But it would take them about, oh, maybe roughly a year. And if it took a year, that would give them enough time to find a U.S. investor that would take over ownership for the U.S. territory, not to mention the algorithms being used. If China's going to fight this in the U.S. court systems, they're going to lose. So the only way they can do this is international court. problem is international court, I don't think, is going to be dealing with one country versus another country. They're going to try to force the issue in the United States court systems first on this one. Federal courts first. Then it'll go through the appeal. Then it's got to go to SCOTUS. SCOTUS will kick it back down. I don't think they want to. I don't think they want to deal with this one. They're dealing with Trump crap so much right now. They don't even want to deal with TikTok. And if they do, they'll force the lower guys to deal with it. Which means it'll be the federal district courts to make the decision on this one. And if the district court rules that Skydance or actually ByteDance and China have a direct influence on the United States through TikTok because of its algorithms. They'll force the issue. And we're going to be dealing with it. Hell of a world to wake up to in the morning.